Today's couple say they want a happy home, but she keeps kicking him out of the house. His offenses don't sound drop kickable to me, but let's find out why she's so quick to show him the door and why he keeps coming back. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Sule Latif and Diane Parks. Mr. Latif and Ms. Parks, you have been together for a year and a half and been living together for a year and a half. Mr. Latif, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about how you got together and then how we got here? Um, we met working at a call center together. Mm -hmm. I was liking her. She was liking me. Yeah. But she did tell me um, I need to back off. But it was because she said that she was really liking me. And I took it as, okay, you know, back off. And I backed off. So it gave me a chance to, like, know her, get to know right. her for, for three months. Right. I just watched her and, you know, got to know her. And then when I found out that she really did like me, it was forward movement from that day. Ms. Parks, you liked him, but you told him to back off. Why? I just moved to Vegas. I wasn't really looking for a relationship. When I moved to Vegas, it was just more on, I need to rebuild myself. So it wasn't, I was looking... Say it again <laughs> for the people in the back. I needed to rebuild myself. Ladies, <laughs> did you hear what Ms. Park said? A guy liked it, but she was, it wasn't her time. She wasn't ready. She didn't have to jump on it. She didn't have to grab him. She didn't have to bring him in the house and lock him down. She was, she was being the best her she could be and didn't need a dude at the moment. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, once you realized she liked you, What'd you do next? Um, I told her, um, I said, yeah, I want you to be my girlfriend. I didn't want to, I, I already knew what I wanted from right. her and already because I'd been watching her for months. And by that time, um, we went out on a date and we went home and I, I think I've been there since. He took you over there and introduced to the other women he may have been talking to, let her know, like, up, oh, it's done, this it's is the one. The one. Mm -hmm. He did that? Yes. Did they take it well? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah. I'm liking you, people. <laughs> Let's keep this going. <laughs> What's concerning you now? I mean, you're here on Before the Vows. You love each other. You obviously have decided that you're the one for each other. Why are we here? What's the concern? We broke up the other day because our fish died. <laughs> And then I, I guess it was my fault that I wasn't the one that was there to help with the fish. You know what I mean? I did come in there to help get it out, but I was actually packing for the show and getting everything ready. Fish. And the fish died, and she broke up with you. <laughs> yeah, basically, it was, um, if she would have had somebody else there, then that, the fish probably wouldn't have died. It's my fault. I need to go back and do this, and this is, yes. Ms. Park. Yes. Did you break up with this man because your fish died? I do. I, I lashes out. When stuff don't go right in my life, I'm going to lash out at him. It's not right, but I do, I would tell him anything. Like, you didn't save my fish, so okay, we don't even need to be together. You can't even pick up the fish out the sink. So I know it's wrong. <laughs> I'm working on myself, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that one. <laughs> Mr. Latif, you also say that not only does she break up with you all the time, that she's always threatening to get a new dude to replace you. That this is a constant refrain. Constant. Give me an example of a time where she threatened to get a new guy on you. What happened? She was going out of town, going to California, her and her sister. She tells me at the last minute, I'm gonna go spend the night at my sister's house um, so that when she gets off, we can go and go to work. I mean, go to California. No problem. I said, well, if that's the case, I'm gonna go with my brother tonight and just, you know, his birthday hang weekend, him. hang out with him. The moment I said that, it was a uh, whole thing. Well, if you're gonna do that, this, this, and this. And I, I, I immediately said, okay, well, calm down. I'm, I'm gonna go do this real quick. If you wanna change your mind, because I know that she can go overboard, you know, I'll give you time to change your mind. But about 12 minutes down the road, I get a text that's, you know, I done lost my house, lost my girl, uh, lost um, everything lost in the house. Fish. Yeah, everything, <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything, you know what I mean? And the new guy is gonna be there when I get back. Ms. Parks, did that happen? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Why were you angry? You were going with your sister. Why can't he go with his brother? What sparked the anger? This is the thing. Before, we had issues with him going out to the club. 
And when he go out to the club, it's not just going out to the club. He's coming back home the next day in the evening, around 12 o'clock the I next object. day is when I'll see him. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, well, I know what you're going out to do because I'm not going to see him. Well, let me ask morning. you this. You were going to California with your sister. Uh -huh. Did you expect him to lock himself in the house and wait till you got back? I mean, what exactly did you expect him to do? Hmm. Well, I did expect <laughs> him to go. <laughs> I did expect him to go out, Your Honor, but... And he's going over a family member's house. I mean, I, that's true. Work with me. <laughs> Anything? You no, because, like I said, when he goes out, it's not just to go out. He's not coming back home. I don't see him for a minute. So it's like, okay, what are you really doing? But you're you leaving out? town. Yeah. Going when to I, another state. And then he didn't say, I didn't leave town that day. Once I found out he was going out with his brother, I said, you know what, I'm not going to go. I'm going to stay and we need to make something else happen. So he said, I'm still going to go out with my brother. So that lets me know, what are you going to go do? If I decided I'm going to stay home, you're still going out with your brother the next day. And I, I, I hear what you're saying. And what I'm going to do next is find out who hurt you and why you're so afraid. She'll ask me, would you like breakfast this morning? I said, yeah, that would be a good idea. And as soon as I said that, she said, that's what I'm talking about. I, I, I was wrong for agreeing that I, that you wanted to cook for me. You know what I mean? Did yeah. you go there? Yeah. Can I respond to that? Let me yeah. take this one right here. So you know none of that is rational, right? Right. And you know you're coming out of a crazy box about some stuff. So that's a function of fear. Yeah. Have you had a lot of abandonment or, or, or mistrust or yes. cheating in your background? Yes. Yeah, and you, they laid those pathways for you. Mm -hmm. They still work it in the back of your head. If there's any possibility of an inkling of a maybe that he might do something could be wrong one day, you're gonna end it today so you don't have to see it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did I get it? On the nose. You say she's disrespectful to you and selfish. Give me some examples of that. Uh, selfish. I can go to work all day, come home. Um, if, if, if there's a time that she's not working and I love to cook and I say, baby, can I, will you cook something? She'll say, she'll have an attitude. Or she'll ask me, do you want me to cook? That was just the last week. She said, do you want me? Would you like breakfast this morning? I said, yeah, that would be a good idea. And as soon as I said that, she said, that's what I'm talking about. I, I, I was wrong for agreeing that, I, that you wanted to cook for me. You know what I mean? You know? Did yeah. you go there? Yeah. <laughs> did, what did you want him to say? Yeah. I don't know, it's, like, it's, be a, it's a lot of emotion that go through my head, because I'm used to working with Sule. So mm. when I'm not at work with him, it's like I'm at home not doing nothing. So when he come back home, and it's like, oh, yeah, were you going to cook? I did say that no, earlier. No, but you asked. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, exactly. Once On a I Saturday said it, morning. because he, he takes <laughs> my word, he runs with everything I say. So if I say I'm going to do something, I do have to live up to it. If something happens later on in the day, if I don't feel like cooking no more, he'll get mad about that. So it's like, okay, I don't feel like cooking because... I wanted to go to work with you all day. I'm used to being to work at with you all day, so I don't know. <laughs> can, I, can I respond to that? No. Huh? <laughs> I, I think let you might want to. I got one let, worse let, than that. Okay, though. I will. Yeah. I will. But let me yeah. take this one right in. <laughs> if you ask a man or woman or anybody if they want something, be genuine in it. Don't be asking him to find out, is he going to take me up on it so I can say to baby after that and he's always want me to do something. If you don't want to cook him breakfast, don't offer. But, but you're his woman mm -hmm. and you want to make him happy mm -hmm. and you said, do you want breakfast? And if he says yes, cook breakfast. Now, if he ain't making you, he ain't asking you, right. but you've got to have a different mindset. Yeah. What you got to say, Mr. Latif? Uh, that's not true what she just said because it doesn't matter whether we work together. You take Thanksgiving last year, okay? We mm -hmm. work together. So because we work together, we make real good money. I told her, I said, you know what? Don't worry about that. You know, I love to cook. We both do. I said, but you work as much as me. You know, you've been putting in all this. I'll just buy Thanksgiving, okay? So you don't have to do that. Right. Okay? Bought the whole Thanksgiving. Do you think I ate? No. What happened? Um, we're sitting there. We had to go to work that night. I said, uh, I was sitting outside with my brother. we sitting there just talking, and she says, uh, baby, do you want me to come out there and make, you want me to make your plate to take to work? I said, yeah, no problem. Make the plate. Get to work. 
Then did you make my plate? No, I forgot. Now you have now she got an attitude because I'm telling her, you know, well, where's the plate? And she's like, well, we'll just go over there at 3 o'clock in the morning when we get off and go get the plate. And I'm like, I don't want to go to nobody's house 4 o'clock in the morning and bother them just about a plate, you know? Right, so, right. And I paid for the whole dinner for everybody. And everybody. couldn't eat none. <laughs> Ms. Parks, talk we were, to me. We were all partying that night. Everybody had drinks. We, we were just laughing, chilling, having a good time. So it slipped my mind to make his plate. And then when we made it home, he the was like, well, did you everything. make my plate? <laughs> I forgot. Why are you to make your own plate? Because I didn't even eat that night. I was too busy drinking, partying, and having a good time. So I didn't have time to make no plates, and I forgot. It slipped my mind. Uh -huh. But did you get mad at him for it? I mean, you said you were going to do yeah, it. because he, he threw it back in my face. Like, did you make it? Okay, I forgot. Calm down. But he has a right to ask, did yeah, you make it? You said too. you were going to do it. Mm -hmm. do. I don't have a right to ask. <laughs> 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 Mr. Mr. Latif, I understand that she puts you out on the regular. I want to talk about that. I called him immediately and told him, you know what, just get your stuff and get out of my house. You better not be there when I get back home. Did you ask for his side of the story mm -hmm. first? Would you want your partner to also be your co-worker? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Today's question sponsored by... Divorce Court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and for exclusive content, go to Apple TV. So, Mr. Latif, does she put you out a lot? Yes. Give me a couple of examples of things that happened that made her put you out. Our biggest one was she got a phone call from a friend that said that I did something or said something to this person that was, you know, like, everybody knows I wouldn't even talk like that to her. Mm -hmm. um, she was at work that day, took it a little overboard, called me, screamed the top of her lungs to the point where, now, I hear this every day, but once I hear certain things, I'm starting to think, you know, this might be true. So that day, yeah, I packed up, I left. Did you lose your mind? So when I got the call, I called him immediately and told him, you know what, just get your stuff and get out of my house. You better not be there when I get back home. Did you ask for his side of the story mm -mm. first? I mean, this guy was a person. This guy is a guy that you go to bed with at night, you close your eyes, you sleep next to him, you trust him with that, you trust him with your body, you trust him, trust him with all of that. You, you didn't trust him enough to say, hey, this is what I heard. What's your side of the story? No. And, and when we did break up, I did regret that. I was just like, you know, I should have handled that a different way. But at that time, yeah, I handled it that way. This is a before your vows. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with you. Mrs. Parks, Ms. Parks, mm -hmm. give me a 30-second impassioned sales job on why you think Mr. Latif is the man for you. I don't want to hear no negative, no, no nothing, no nothing bad. It's got to be all good, all positive. Sell me. Go. He's something in a relationship that I never had. So, yeah, I do get afraid because I seem like, it seems like everything is too good. So I'll just back off. That's when I put up that brick wall. But, yeah, he's a good guy, great guy. Makes me feel like a queen. But it's just, yeah, when I get certain, or certain things happen in our life, I'll get scared. Mm -hmm. you, you left that. It was beautiful. <laughs> you left out one thing. I love him. No. <laughs> <laughs> he puts up with your ludicrous behind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he does. A lot of men would have broke camp long ago. I know. But he stays in it to win it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Latif, 30 seconds. Why is Miss Parks... And, and you really gonna have to sell me on this one. <laughs> <laughs> you could go um. about and get anybody and avoid all of this. So you tell me why you take all of this. Go. Out of everybody I've met or been through in the past 20, 30 years, she's the only person I get along with. I don't like people. Um, I don't like to be around people. I'm just being honest. Um, uh, if I do, you know, I can, I want, you know, we had enough time. Mm -hmm. Her, I can stay with her 24-7, all day, all night. She completes me. Oh, even better. <laughs> You made a believer out of me. She fits, right speaking. So, I'm gonna give you my best advice. 
Today's question sponsored by... What would you do if your partner put you out of the house on a regular basis? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I'm going to address the remainder of my comments to the gear that is loose. So you can just relax. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to her. <laughs> Ms. Sparks, I know you good. I know you know you got a good man. Mm -hmm. But what you don't know how to do is work on yourself. And you started out talking about I needed some time for myself, and I think you do. So you know that there's, there's a gear in there that's wobbling and it's not doing right, and you wanted to get it right before you got with him, but you end up getting with him before you got right. So let me help you get right. All of that anger is a function of fear. You cannot change what happened to you. And what happened to you has caused your body to respond in a regular way. Anytime you get anything negative or possibly could hurt you, all of, you have a chemical response, adrenaline, cortisol, mm -hmm. all of that rides up into, and boom! But what you have to do is fight the feeling and know you have to fight the feeling. The time not to get mad about something is before you get mad about anything. So every morning, you got to lay it out there. Sule, mm -hmm. today, just today, I'm not going to get mad at nothing. I'm just, declare it so you can reach it. So it's, so it's, it, it's, it's, it's a solid and firm goal. And then, if you get mad, you see that? Get ready to start. You get ready to talk about that other dude. You getting ready to put him out. I want you to raise your hands like this. It's a silly thing to do, but anyway, I want you to surrender. Just let all those chemicals just wash through. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, you're not going to be able to do it the first few times. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work out. You still going to get and, yeah. and you're going to get up. But after a while, when you keep talking to yourself every morning, and then in the nighttime, you debrief your day. Okay. It's just what happened. This is when I got excited. Mm -hmm. And you write it down. Ooh, well, that, that was stupid. That was dumb. Maybe tomorrow I'll do better. Maybe I'll only have four incidents tomorrow instead of the five that I have here. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow morning, say the same thing. Sule, today, <laughs> just today. I'm not going to get angry. You were taught to be afraid over time by action. You can teach yourself to be safe over time mm -hmm. by action. And you can also get a counselor to help you with that situation. That's just what I use. Because okay. I used to be a fountain of anger. But it wasn't <laughs> killing nobody as badly as it was killing me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you going to try that for me? I have to, yeah. You have, I mean... Do something ludicrous before you do the most ludicrous thing in your life, which is to lose this cat right here. Because he is a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to both of you. This matter is adjourned. Thank you. Why do you want this to work so bad? I want it to work because I love her. I put up with it so long because she's... It's basically the same thing I've went through. Mm -hmm. So I kind of understand it. Is there anything that you think you could have fixed earlier on to, to keep you guys from getting here? Lashing out at him, mm -hmm. telling him to get out every time I do get mad. Do you think you have an attitude problem? Yeah, I yeah. do. I do. Yeah. And I, I know that's something I have to work on. Judge Lynn also said you guys should go see some somebody. Oh, yeah. Counseling is a good idea. Do you agree? Great idea. Okay, so we'll follow up with you then. today on Divorce Court. I'm in court today because I want to regain my husband's trust. Latoya, I want you to know that I love you. 
but we also have some issues. I started a relationship off with a lie by not telling John that I was already married. Then it led to John going out cheating. Some of the problems I would say is uh, infidelity and things that hasn't been resolved from the past. John, I want you to trust me more. Be a provider and not put everything on me. I would want the judge to talk to Ms. Milner about being open-minded. I'm trying to do everything that I can as a wife to be there for you as well, but I can't if you're not there with me. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Latoya Milner and John Sensley. The two of you have been together for 12 years, married for one year, but we have a problem already. I'm going to start with Ms. Milner. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you're here in divorce court today? I'm here in divorce court today because I'm trying to gain trust into Mr. Sensley and save our marriage at the same time. Gain trust in him or from him? From him. Okay, go yes. ahead. Um, we met in middle school, mm -hmm. and we've been knowing each other since we was about maybe nine or ten. Mm -hmm. I moved away right after eighth grade, so he went to a different high school, and so did I. I moved back to the city, and therefore I had a little book, and I had John's number in it, and I called him, and he called me back. So then we began hanging out. He came out with me for one of my birthday gatherings, mm -hmm. and from that point on, we started talking, and then eventually we started dating maybe like six months later. Mm -hmm. We started dating. Okay. Between the time that we were dating, we went on, and John, he wasn't consistent with it. Like, you would see him today, mm -hmm. and then tomorrow you may not see him, but he's always, when you call him, I'm coming over. I'm mm -hmm. coming over. And you be waiting, he never show up. He went to sleep, he got off late, whatever happened. So we went through that for a while. Then I went to Nashville, Tennessee with my best friend, to kind of clear my head because mm -hmm. I was falling in love with John. Mm -hmm. Now, when I called him and we was hanging out, it wasn't supposed to go that way. It was just supposed to be friends. It wasn't supposed to leave. Well, what was the reason why it wasn't supposed to go that way? I was married. Well, that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't tell him, so I left trying to escape the relationship. Mm -hmm. He called me back and he said, you know, he wanted to work it out and I said I had a secret to tell him. Mm -hmm. And that's when I told him I was married. I th he said he kind of knew something was going on because the phone wasn't in my name. Right, so right, right. when you called, it was a different name. Okay. Mr. Sensley, is that a fairly accurate recitation yes, of what occurred? Yes, yes ma'am. And were you suspicious about what she was doing even before she told you she was married, or did yes. it come as a complete surprise? It didn't come as a complete surprise. You kind of knew something was up. Yeah, that's why I kept my distance. In the beginning, that's why it was because, like, it wasn't adding up, so I kept my it distance. It was cool, yeah, so myself. you didn't want it. So you ran away so you wouldn't fall in love with him. What happened? Because you obviously ended up together. That's when he called me back, and when I told him, you know, he said he wanted to work it out. Mm -hmm. I said, well, look, I'm in love with you, but I'm not supposed to be. So I came back to Atlanta, mm -hmm. and we called ourselves working it out, and... I was told to leave the ex-husband, divorce, do whatever I got to do if I'm going to be with him. Right. So I, de I decided to get a divorce. Right. So I tried to do the right thing and try to start over and do it right. So I was still trying to work it out. And then, like, 2010, mm -hmm. at the end of 2010, we end up conceiving our daughter. So in 2000. You still married? No, I was divorced by you then. You divorced by yeah, then. Yeah, I divorced him. You ended I'm... up having a child with Mr. Sensley. Yes. Because I, when I divorced my ex-husband, I decided to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to regain yeah, No, I got, it. I, got, I, got, I got it. Fast forward me to where there's a problem right before marriage. Well, all the problems started right before the marriage. Right after I told him I was married, mm -hmm. um, that's when a lot of the infidelity started coming out with Mr. Sims. Okay, tell me a couple of instances <laughs> where you caught him doing things with other women. Well, I did a little investigation with mm -hmm. help of my friends. And that's when I found out that he had another female mm -hmm. that was um, pregnant at the time. Now, you weren't married yet. We wasn't married, no. But we you were divorced from the other guy. We were divorced. And some other woman popped up pregnant. How'd you find that out? She called one day we was at home, and I got to the phone before he did. And he, she and told you? she told me everything. Mr. Sensley, how did that, that it, it, did it happen that way? Mm, mm, kind of, sort of, Yana, but it was more to that. Tell me what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, um, she blames it on her woman's intuition, and she says she was having dreams. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll be honest, Yana, I wasn't living right. Right. Because, okay. I mean, you know, I, I, I didn't feel that everything was true and honest, so I was painting the city red. I mean, uh, just We just honest. out and about. Yeah. Do, yeah just doing living. your thing. So, um... That went on for a while. She just kept... And then she just kept coming with all these scenarios. Like, she was hitting me out of the blue because she was like, um... I seen some cats by my car. Somebody pregnant. And, you know... <laughs> and I'm looking like... I ain't no cat finna tell you that. You know, and then she talking about... I'm you dreaming. You didn't do that, did you? I did. Then she you really believe that out. every time a cat comes by your car, somebody's pregnant? I do. <laughs> Cats go by cars all the time. But this cat, these two cats kept sitting on the porch and they wouldn't go away. And they just kept sitting there and I don't have a cat. <laughs> I don't feed them, so I don't know why they were sitting. I've heard of, like, black cats being bad luck, going under a... Is right. there a wives' tale that if you see a cat and you won't go away, somebody you know is pregnant? Yes, because she was. <laughs> but, see, that's the thing, Your Honor. I mean, um, I was fooling around, like right. I said, I admit, but... That wasn't my baby. So the cat was for somebody else. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was. Was I mean, it not? Her, did it turn out to be that that baby wasn't his? It did. It did. So leave the cat theory alone. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go from there and get to the point where you got married and how difficult things have been since you've been married. All of my friends, male friends know about him. When it comes to his female friend, he doesn't tell him we're in a relationship. Do you not tell people you're married to her? Everyone in my family knows who she is. They know she's the mother of my children. But they don't know you married her. They gonna know now. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>Mr. Sensley, you say that Ms. Milner believes that she should be allowed to have male friends, but you ought not be allowed to have female friends. Is that accurate? Yes, that's accurate, Sean. Explain Shana. that to me. I mean, just as Ms. Milner, I mean, we were childhood friends. Right. Like, we had a platonic relationship until she called me that day. Now, it's other women in my life, just they are the same. I mean, mm. she know them. We all went to school together, so it's not a surprise. Right. That's just her way of just trying to look at my phone to see if I'm talking to somebody or thinking I'm cheating or something. So she basically doesn't trust me. So, Ms. Milner, do you have a double standard where you can have male friends, but he can't have female friends? Yes and no. Um, and the reason I say that, because most of my... All of my friends, male friends, know about him, have spoken to him. When it comes to his female friend, he doesn't tell them we're in a relationship. And that's the problem I have. I have no problem with you having a female friend. But if you're not telling them you're in a relationship with me and I'm just a baby mama, that's not fair. I seem to recall you saying that he also tells his own family that you're his baby mama and not his wife. Is that accurate? That is accurate. Do you not tell people you're married to her? I'm scared to tell her, Yana. Why? Because the next... I feel that the next day we'll be going through a divorce or something. I mean, it's so up and down. I mean, they know she in my life, but they... I'm scared, because I don't, I don't... You know, I don't want to get... You don't want to go out that. like that. Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Everyone in my family knows who she is. They know she's the mother of my children. But they don't know you married her. They gonna know now. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, they will. Mm -hmm. Indeed, they will. Mr. Sesley, you say that she is interfering with your spirituality because she has a problem with the women at church. Tell me about that. That's another thing, Yana. I grew up... I'm from Louisiana, so I grew up in the deep south, and, you know, religion mm -hmm. and spirituality, right. that's a part of you. Now, I don't believe she understands when I tell her that that's why my heart feels at home because, I mean, you can go to whatever church you want, but it's going to be one that makes you feel the home, home church that you, and yeah. welcome. Right, right. I can't go there because, I mean, I'm being accused of talking to women at the church. Why can't he go to the church he likes? Um, because he is talking to a member of the church. Oh, ever... you know... Oh, you... A particular woman. It's a little blurry, but... It's yeah, a little blurry, but it's, 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 but it's real. Do you know what we're talking about here? I know who she's talking about, but I don't know what she got on that paper. <laughs> it says, good morning, and then can't stop looking at you, miss you, stop out for a second. 
I'm sorry, I just got the message. Let's take, let's talk at church. Sorry, are you? I can look at it. Yeah, I, I hope you can read it, because I had a hard time with it. <laughs> yeah, I know, put it down, it's okay. It was it, it very confusing. Are, do you know the particular individual about whom she's speaking? Yes. And has there ever been anything illicit or romantic between the two of you? No, we, um... I was a hesitant no. Yeah. No, we, uh, talk on the phone, but, like, as far as, like, a physical relationship, no. And that's what I keep telling her, like, I mean, I'm just being... She's a friend of yours. Yeah, yeah, and then the thing about it is she, um, you know, mature, so, you know, I ain't... She's too old for you, is what you're saying. <laughs> I don't want to say that, but yeah. something along those lines. How old is she? <clears throat> Grown. <laughs> You're a diplomatic dude, because you don't want to get in any trouble. <laughs> I, I get that part. I, I see the nature of your trust issues here, but I also understand there are very significant problems with respect to your finances, and I would like to discuss that now. He works 88 hours every two weeks, but he's always broke. I pay everything. You except, pay for everything. Except the money he gives me for the kids if he don't short me. Do you make more or does he make more? I think he makes more. I don't think she's telling the truth about how much he make. Is it okay for your partner to make friends with the opposite sex at church? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Today's question sponsored by... Divorce Court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and for exclusive content, go to Apple TV. Ms. Milner, you say your husband fails to take seriously his responsibility as the financial uh, head of the household. Why don't you tell me what you mean by that? He works 88 hours every two weeks. But he's always broke. I do 80 hours every two weeks. I have three kids to take care of and a whole bunch of bills and credit cards in my name. Along with that being said, a lot of times when we want to go out and eat or go out on dates, take the kids places, he don't ever have any money. So I'm constantly swiping my credit cards. Okay. Who pays what bills at the house? Who pays the rent? Who pays gas, utilities? I pay everything. You except, pay for everything. Except the money he gives me for the kids if he don't short me. May well, I he's on back. child support, is he not? He's not. But you were. Yes, and that's the whole thing. When I was on child support, I was paying an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. That's the money she's used to having. Mm -hmm. Now, when we sat down and we both put everything out on the table, what we had to pay and this and that, right. I meet those demands for the house, but... I also have bills that I have to pay, you know, and then also last year in April, my mother passed and I was willed some properties mm -hmm. and things like that and I refused to let those go under hard as my parents work for those right. things. So I'm not no... Right. And she has to understand that this is not for me. I mean, this is for our children. Do you pay any of the basic uh, cost of living, like the rent, the gas, the light, electric, My all of that? My name is on nothing in her house. She, but you're married, so she, it's your house, too. The amount of money she asked me for, I give it to her, and I go on about my business. So there's a set amount you're supposed to co contribute to the household yes. every month. You do that, and, and then the rest of it, you spend maintaining the legacy that you would like to leave your children? No, I mean, I have a car note, and, you know, like right. I said, all of my bills, it's just once I meet the demands as far as her, you know, I still have Does to Does he give you end. a consistent amount of money every month? No. He may be short $50. He may be short $100. Well, Big what's ten. the... Well, how much? Is it $50 out of 100 or is it $50 out of 15 Instead of 300 every two weeks, it might be 200 so 300 every two weeks is what he supposed, supposed to be getting. And I gave him a break, because it's supposed to be, like, close to seven. According to the court order, we did have. But he said that was breaking his pocket, it was killing him, he couldn't do it. But, you know, when you're married to a guy, he's not supposed to be chaining your child support. He's supposed right. to be actively engaging in the economic security of the home according to how much both of you make. Do you make more or does he make more? 
I think he makes more. I don't think she telling the truth about how much she make. <laughs> I'm serious. Yon, I ain't never seen that one bill in that house. And I don't even know what the rent is. And I don't ask no questions just as long as she hush and quiet. You just kind of <laughs> seem like a visitor. You don't seem like you're really, like, a member of the family. And you're I just a dude living her. there. I explain that to her. I tell her, I say, I feel like I'm just here to be closer to my children and to keep you quiet because, like, when I'm not there, then she said I, I walked out on the family. Right. But when I'm there, she act like I'm just a bump on the wall. So, like I say... You just keep I, it I, quiet. Yeah, I keep, yeah. I keep my distance. But are you still under court order to pay that child support? No, but that's what she expects, and that's uh. the whole thing, and see what she so feels... So, has real. the court order expired? Um, I or just went down and took... You went court. down and took him off of... Mm -hmm. uh, I got it. I got it. I also understand, Mr. Sensley, you believe that... Ms. Milner lives far beyond her means, and that's yes. part of the problem with the economics. So that's what I want to talk about now. Today's question sponsored by... What would you do if you felt your spouse was keeping their finances secret from you? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. So tell me briefly about her economic excesses. Well, Your Honor, I come from a two-parent household. We worked, we earned our money, we saved, and we set goals. Like Ms. Milner stated earlier, if she wants something, she pull out a credit card and go buy it. You creating debt. I'm not gonna do that. I set what a goal. What kind of things does she buy that you think are extravagant? I mean, it's not that. It's the bulk of it. I mean, she buy a lot of stuff. I mean, like, like, like shoes, but you know, women shoes, stuff. nails, hair. hair. All that. Do you spend a lot of money on your shoes and your nails and your hair and your appearance? Going out to eat no, and then going out to eat. Then hanging with her girlfriends. You know, hanging she got with put your girlfriends. On. Anything else? You know. <laughs> I don't see no nails on her. Yeah. And if she was a nail person, she'd wear her nails here. I'm just saying, I'm not... I, I, I can't say for sure, but <laughs> you can usually tell when they're like that because if they're going to wear nails anyway, they do it on television. But uh, I think you're two nice people who don't quite trust each other and have decided to just manage your life as business partners. And that's cool if everybody's happy with it. You seem very jovial and happy. You a little suspect over there. Yes. Um, go to a marriage counselor for a couple of months and decide what it is you really want to do. Because I don't think you know you want to be married, co-parents, or, or roommates. Yeah, and it, I can answer that question. What? Like I said, I want my marriage. I was raised in a two-parent home. I believe the children need but, both but, parents. But, you got, but then you have to participate like a husband, not just the guy who pays the rents and keeps her quiet and sleeps downstairs. That's just you, mad. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, then you have to t figure out how not to be angry or not, what not to be angry about. Y'all need marriage counseling. And I Lots agree. of it. <laughs> I agree. Because I don't know what... Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't have a married state of mind. It's like you two single people that kind of, you know glance off each other every while at the bank and with the kids. And that's no way to conduct a marriage. I wish you the best, though. You seem like nice people. Go to marriage counseling. <laughs> you're gonna go to counselor here, and we're gonna see if we can figure out what it is to be married, and then I hope you can manage it. This matter is adjourned. Judge Lynn said you guys are more like roommates and you don't have a marriage state of mind. What's your reaction to that? That is correct. I wish we didn't, but honestly, it is. I understand we do have issues. I mean, I'm willing to open the word things out. She is my wife and I love her, and we have children. Um, I don't want to shake that foundation for my children. today on Divorce Court. All right, so I'm in court today because of my fiance. We have 
couple issues. Well, I have issues with him. Um, pretty much an addiction to video games. My favorite game, they track your time, and since I started playing that game, I've recorded over 3,000 hours. And I'm like, oh wait, just one second, one more game, one more game. And I'm like, no, we have to go. I want the judge to explain to her that I'm a great man and that I am the one for her. Stefan, I want you to put down the video games and pick me up a little bit more. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Nosha Rose and uh, Stefan Jennings. The two of you, you're young, 23 and 22. You've been engaged. Uh, you've been together for a year, engaged for two months, got no kids. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> but you're not quite sure whether or not you should get married, so you came to me for your before your vows. I've taken a look at your compatibility test, and now I want to know from you, Ms. Rose, why are you here? Why do you love him, but you're not quite sure this should work? Well, I love him to death. I think God made him specifically for me. Um, but God didn't tell me about the little issues I was going to have. Um, one mainly in particular is his addiction to, to video games. Video, video games. Video games. And, okay, I know he's a boy. He's young, like you said. Mm -hmm. But it's a problem. Like, it's a how huge much, problem. How much video gaming does he do? 300 hours in two months. In two months? Yes, and that's just one game. Remember, he plays other games. This is just his favorite one. Do you have 300 hours in one game over two months? I mean, I only play two games currently, so, yeah, kind of. <laughs> do you think that's a little much? Not really, because usually I do all my work first, and then I, the games are always my second. Second to, thing. Yeah. What do you do after that? Hang with her. Hang with her. Yeah, hang with her, chill with her, anything else we kind of want to do. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have any other hobbies or anything that you do? Do you go places? I mean, my hobby is kind of my job, my career, so. Your hobbies, really what's your career? Oh, I do photography and videography, and I also host my own events. Okay. Photography, videography. Mm -hmm. And when you say you host your own events, what kind of events are those? I host car shows and I also host parties at like clubs or my own venue that I'll find out and scope out. Lucrative? Very. Really? <laughs> I, I mean, I think that's fabulous. What do you do for a living? That's what we do together. He oh, left you do it together? He put I instead of we, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm the brains behind all this. And I'm the hard work one. <laughs> Do you think you have a video game problem? I mean, 300 hours in two months, that's a lot. I don't think so. Like, for instance, let me tell you this. I took away all your video games for a week. Would you be upset? Would it bother you? Would you be nervous? Would you have to have a drink? Eh, no. I'll just find something else to do. If it's not available, I'll just find something else to do. If it's available, I'll do it. But if it's not, then it's just not. It's not a problem. Not an issue. No, not an issue at all. Not an issue at all. <laughs> Do you think she wants you to spend more time with her? Let's I... ask her. <laughs> hey, Ms. Rose, would you like him to spend more time with you? I would like him to spend more time with me, I guess, like, at night. But, like, there's certain things that I want to do. Just lay, cuddle, watch a movie, you know, watch Netflix, you know. We do that in the day, but, like... So you're telling me he lacks intimacy with you playing that game. We'll be having sex and... But there's one time specifically that we, you know, were doing yeah. it, and um, he was behind me, and I had to put so my hands down for a second. So much more information than I was looking for. Oh, I, th I, I thought I was making it, you know. <laughs> but yeah. We'll go ahead and finish. So we're there now. You know, I had to, you know, put my head down a little bit, you know. And I look up. He has the controller in his hand and the headset on, and he's still playing the game. <laughs> Oh, my in, God. in my defense, Mr. Jenny. No, in no. my defense, she gets what she wants. I get what I want. We both happy. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Mr. Jennings, really? <laughs> You're distracted. Not at all. Honestly, You're not doing that's... your best work. <laughs> You're not dedicated to the proposition of pleasing. Well, I honestly, I had no idea until I looked up. So he was doing a decent job. <laughs> oh, boy. Do you go outside much? A lot. Do you really where you go? 
I go out, she's usually with me, so we usually do things together. So we usually go to the movies, or I'll take her out, like, we'll take random trips to, like, Naples, which is, like, two hours drive to the other coast of Florida and stuff like that, like. Oh, well, that's a good thing. Yeah, we that's do extrav thing. extravagant things like that, you know what I mean, uh -huh, with our time. Uh -huh. I don't like doing, like, the small things, like. You know, what are, what are the small things? Small things are, like, like going out to dinner or stuff like that, like. I, I rather plan bigger events uh -huh. for us and stuff like that. I don't bigger usually go out with my friends because I don't really have us. that much friends, so. Is, is that true? He, on the daily, he's kind of absent, but he goes big when he goes? Well, he's very antsy. So, you know, like I said, I like to lay down and watch a whole Netflix series, like, for the whole day. He can't do that. He's like, all right, so, babe, what are we doing next? What are we doing? Let's go somewhere. Let's do something. Like, come on, go, go. And just, like, relax. And then <laughs> if I'm, you know, not down to do anything, then, oh, that's the whole leeway for him to just hop right on the video game. And that, that's it. Exactly. So, you always ever sit at home and just talk. I guess we're together so much that, like, you know, he hears me yap as much as it is, so he just sits and listens. Oh, he doesn't listen. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now. I know he doesn't listen. I mean, I'm a communicator. <laughs> he lets you yap, but he ain't listening. <laughs> this is experience talking. Married 30 years. He's heard like about one-tenth of what I said. <laughs> <laughs> and that's on a good day. <laughs> I'm going to switch topics here and go on to something else. I understand, Ms. Rose, that you come from a very religious background and that the fact that you and Mr. Jennings, and now the whole world knows that you guys are intimate hmm. prior to marriage, your family has a great deal of problem with that. So I want to talk about how that is affecting this relationship. They don't think that we should kiss, hold hands, none of that, out of wedlock. They believe all that no should be done with... No kissing a whole dance? Yeah. Like, sex. we've heard... They've told me their stories, like our grandparents, about how they would just read the Bible together until they got married, and then after they got married, that's when they, they started doing They just figured it out those. from there. So, Ms. Rose, tell me about your family. They are very religious. Yes. And are they unhappy with the fact that you two have intimate relationships even though you're not married? Well, they love Stefan, but they don't love the fact that they know that we're intimate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I had a pregnancy scare, actually, and my family, like, lost it, kind of. Right. Um, they didn't even know I was intimate. Right. At all. <laughs> so to hear that I'm pregnant, it's like, oh, wow, you must have You been. told them? Yeah, yeah. I was scared. <laughs> we had to leave our vacation early and everything. We, were, we went to vacation in the Turks and Caicos. Um, that's where he's from. And it was amazing. We were supposed to stay for like a month, and I cut it short to a week because I was scared that I might have been pregnant. Why didn't um, you just find out down there? I'd have stayed on vacation, because if you were pregnant, the damage is already done. The hospital care <laughs> on the island is non-existent. Uh -huh. so. Her doing all those things down there was not an option. Do you think that her family's views on sex at all impacts your relationship, or you really just kind of blow it off? I don't blow it off, because I respect her and, her and her family. So I try to keep, like, the PDA to a minute. private mm -hmm. or away from them, from their eyes. Exactly mm -hmm. why, when she had her pregnancy scare, they just found out, right. oh, she's having sex. Like, gotcha. that's a big thing. They don't think that we should kiss, hold hands, none of that, out of wedlock. They believe all that no should be done with... No kissing a whole dance? Yeah. Like, we've heard... They've told me their stories, like our grandparents, about how they would just read the Bible together until they got married, and then after they got married, that's when they, they started doing all those... They just figured it out from there. Ms. Rose, why don't you tell me of your concerns or insecurities about his Instagram life and the women that he meets there? Mr. Stefan, also known as Bang Coop, has 25,000 followers. As who? Bang Coop. <laughs> B-I-N-G? No, 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 no. B-A-N-G-C-O-U-P-E. Bang Coop. If you'd like me to tell you how he got that name or if you want to ask him, that's up to you. <laughs> How'd you Actually, get that name? Uh, all right. I... Okay, I'll tell it. <laughs> so, it wasn't me, but it was some other girl in the car, and they were banging in the coop. And that's how he got bang coop. So, I guess I'm bang coop 2.0, or whatever. To elaborate on the story, this was totally way before I met her. And... It could be two way before. You're only 22. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way before. I mean, I've been driving since I was 16, so we were just doing what we were doing in the coop, and one of, my friends, one of my friends rolled up on us. You he were caught... doing it in the car somewhere where people could roll up on you? 
<laughs> I must be so old. <laughs> it's just, you know, we, at least we hid. Uh, Ms. Rose, um, <laughs> why do you, but I want to go back to Bang Coop's uh, <laughs> business. Do the women on Instagram bother you? And who are they and what is he doing with them? Well, the fact that he has a lot of followers, I try not to let it get to me, but of course, every girlfriend has their little insecurities and jealousy. He does photography, so, you know, I call them social media sluts or, mm -hmm. you know, hoes or thoughts. Excuse me, I have a lot of names for them. And, you know, they... Well, are they, is he doing anything inappropriate with them or is he just taking pictures? The pictures are slightly inappropriate. Um, okay, I well, Nick, would you bring you. me the pictures? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Jennings, why don't you explain to me what you're doing and why? Only thing I, I think she could say that I do is that when they DM me, obviously everything's run through my social media. So when they send me instant messages and stuff like that, she also has the password to my phone and everything. She can clearly see who hits me up, what I'm saying back to them. And she comes with me to some of my shoots also, so she knows what's going on mm -hmm. behind. You got nothing and, to hide. Huh? Nothing you got to nothing hide. to hide. Yeah. <laughs> like, she has the fingerprint to my phone. I really have nothing to hide. You joined in this picture. <laughs> 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 was she there that day? No. Oh, no. <laughs> I want to go to the next issue. You know, you, you have proposed to her, mm -hmm. but she has concerns that you only proposed to her because you believe she, were, she was pregnant at the time. So we want, I want to discuss that next. Oh my gosh, very religious, no right. in a wetlock, and might be pregnant. Did her family lean on you when they thought she was pregnant? What would you do if your partner's video game addiction interfered with your intimacy? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Today's question sponsored by Divorce Court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and for exclusive content, go to Apple TV. Ms. Rose, do you really think he only proposed to you because he thought you were pregnant at the time? Not just the fact that I thought I was pregnant, but also my family and how their customs are and, you know, rules. I know that they had a talk with him um, at some point in our relationship, mm -hmm. but I could just imagine what was, you know, talked about in that conversation. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of putting two and two together, like, oh, my gosh, very religious, no sense right. in a wet lock, and might be pregnant. That baby needs two solid parents. And Did her family lean on you when they thought she was pregnant? When we got back from vacation and she kind of just let everyone else in her family know, they came straight to me and were like, like, listen, if this is true, then you definitely are gonna have to go down to the church right now, get married, like, you cannot move any more forward without being married and so on and so forth. So I did feel the pressure, but yet again, I know what we want and I know we don't want that running to a church and just getting married because mm -hmm. someone told us. I think it should be something we choose and decide and give, and you only get married once. Well, you should be In an up. ideal world. Yeah, you yeah, should I only got, get married yeah, once. Got, and yeah. That one time should just be that magical time. So mm -hmm. running down to the church and getting married because she's pregnant isn't ideally yeah. a magical. But had she turned out to be pregnant instead of just a scare, would you have gone on and married her because of the pressure and because of how much no. consternation she would have had? Then why did you propose just at that moment? I bought the ring before we got, went on vacation to Turks and Caicos, which uh. she didn't know. And I took her to, because I used to live there, I know all the private spots. So I took right. her to a nice little private beach spot. And I was just going to just, it was supposed to be like a promise ring kind of thing to right. solidify our relationship together. And I don't know, like literally five minutes before I actually talked to her right there on the beach, I. Something just told me, I don't know, skip the promise ring part and just go, go, go to the engagement to... part. Let right. her, that shows that you're actually serious. You know what I mean? Anyone could just buy a promise ring and give it to a girl. You know what I mean? But being engaged and having an engagement, that's a lot bigger than just, you know, a promise. Mr. Jennings, I like you. 
all grown over there at 22? I got 40 years old. 40 year olds in here don't have as much sense as you do. That was wonderful. You got a good brother over here. I like no. him. I like you too, but he's a little special. <laughs> Do you have any temptation at all from those those women that hit you, hit, hit you up on Instagram? Oh, not at all. None? Not at all. <laughs> what can they offer me what she can't? You know what I mean? That's how I look at it. <laughs> Is there anything you've seen him do, say, in his DM, anything like that in the comment sections that leads you to believe that he leads these women on? Girls are crazy. They'll do anything. You know, really? if it means, you know, their followers. This big thing about followers today is like, yeah. it's nonsense. It's like a disease. Like, they need more followers or else they'll die. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> and they can get it from him if they get a photo shoot from him or maybe some more, you know? No, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. You're not interested, though, are you? Not at all. I, I'm here for the money. Okay. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> and I ain't mad at you either. Let me tell you what I think about this whole thing. Today's question sponsored by... What would you do if your family imposed their extreme religious views on your relationship? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I don't know how. I could possibly like you two more. <laughs> uh, and I know, you know, you're young and fun and you're doing these you're crazy things on the Instagram and all that kind of stuff, uh, but you're making money at it. You're not just doing it to fool around and play around and you're in the business with him, managing the whole thing and making it run. What a lovely thing to have two people who are mature, they love each other, they're working at a business together, they know where the line is. Most days, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something to you about the video games, but most days they know where the line is. He don't wanna rush to get married just cause of this and oh, he, you know, the, the thought that went into that, why give her a promise ring? Anybody can do that. Let me let this woman know that she's my future by giving her an engagement ring. Oh, you sound so good over there. <laughs> I mean, it just, it, it's wonderful to see, especially at your age. You're so very, very young, and it, it, it is so very wonderful. I will just say this for all of us over 55. <laughs> Watch out that your life does not become confined to a screen. And the only thing, there's one thing, we don't know what it does to the brain. Neoplasticity, your brain changes how it functions based upon what you do regularly. That's how ad addicts get addicted, is because the regular pleasure centers get, keep getting poked with the wrong thing. And I'm just saying, be careful of that. You say you have it contained. I haven't met an alcoholic yet who says, I can stop if I want to. Not a one. And this is just another behavior that hits that pleasure center of the brain Easily, so you always just like anybody with 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 alcohol, with opiates, with anything else. You got to watch how often you do it, and you always have to do everything in moderation. You go too far with anything, it could just go off the road. And you've got a great woman here. I mean, she's fabulous. She's beautiful. She loves you to death. She doesn't mind if you have play video games while having sex with her. This is deep. That is a deep, abiding love. I'd have hit you on the head with something, personally. But anyway, listen, I wish you the best. Go, you know, take your time, do it in your own time, but, but, but take this woman on and marry her and have a wonderful, fabulous life. And I may even follow you on Instagram. This matter is adjourned. <laughs> Are we convinced this is this is it? This full on, full throttle? Absolutely. This is my twin, female twin. <laughs> what are the wedding plans? Wedding Tell plans? Us. Turks and Kitty is Grand Turk, you're invited. I'm, I got <laughs> two plans coming up, great. <laughs> All right, cool, I appreciate you guys. I wish you best of luck. Thank All right. you. All right.
today on Divorce Court. I'm here at Divorce Court because I'm tired of being married to Dark Juan, tired of his cheating, lying, and helping me take care of our kids. When I first met Giovanna, she was an angel. Now she just a pain in my butt. I'm just being accused of cheating all the time. I really want the judge to tell Dark Juan that he needs to grow up, be a man, and financially support his kids. I want the judge to say to Giovanna, be more supportive of your husband, and when things get rough, don't talk down on him. Dark Juan, I want to get a divorce. I'm not in love with you anymore. I'm done. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Giovanna Kendrick and Darquan Ellis. The two of you have been together for 10 years. Married for three, you have two children together. Uh, you are here on a divorce case. Mrs. Kendrick, you are hot about a $375 game he bought when I believe you were in a shelter and he bought a game off your car. So you hot about that and you want that back. But before we get to that, Mrs. Kendrick, why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why we're here today? Well, like you said, we've been together for 10 years and we met at an early age. Mm -hmm. um, throughout the marriage, Darquan has not been faithful. He has not helped provide for our children. And um, I'm just done. I'm ready for a divorce. Well, give me the first time or so or early on when you found out that uh, he was cheating on you? Well, about a week after giving birth to our, our son, uh -huh. <laughs> I went through um, Darquan's phone and I found out he was texting some girl that he met at his job like the night I gave birth to our son. And he told her that he was a single father of two and that he lived alone and he just financially supported me and our kids. What about the website? Um, once I was helping him do an application and I was on his email address and well, his email account and I seen a link to a website and I went on it and I seen an account with Darquan's picture on it and pictures of himself soliciting sex from other women. Pictures of himself? All of himself. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ellis, do you care to tell me what happened? Um, I would like to say that, uh... First and foremost, before all the, the cheating and stuff happened, right. um, I was a faithful guy. How long <clears> had <throat> you been faithful before the cheating stuff started? Um, since we got together. I've been but, faithful. But I don't know. You got to give me some dates here, you know, for, for a year, for two years? Uh, September 27, 2016, we got married. Like I said, like a, a little after that, like, like a year later. And a year after the, you got married, you started cheating? After, yeah. So you were faithful to your wife for a whole 12 months? Is what you're trying to tell me? Yeah, cause she like she she would always accuse me of cheating when I wasn't. Uh -huh. So you, you know? thought you might as well make it true. I mean, it, yeah. He you said say that like before. That. Were you married when she was pregnant and you were typing another girl when she was pregnant? Yes. How long had you been married? Um, that's been that, that was like a couple of months, like a couple of months after we got married. And you were cheating on her. Yeah, somebody and she, else. A couple like of she was, she was, she would accuse me of cheating when I wasn't though, like. That would that that pushed me to cheat. That pushed me to cheat. It's her fault. It's mo mostly my fault because I did it, but she pushed me to do it. You sticking with that story? Yeah. Okay. You said in your papers that the problem was you were only having sex one to two times a week and that you wanted to have sex every day. Hence the cheating. Well, that was one of the reasons why I cheated, because like I wasn't getting sex at home. So, so like, not uh, enough sex, and she was accusing she of was you. She was accusing me of cheating, and then we would argue, and then like she, we like we would argue a lot. Mm. I wasn't getting sex. That 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 caused me to I cheat. I got you. Yeah. Tell me what happened when you called his job. One morning, I woke up, got our child ready for school, and um, Darquan wasn't home yet. He worked overnight, and so I called him to see where he was because he had my car, and he didn't answer the phone. I called several times, so I decided to call his job. And I spoke with his manager. His manager said that Darquan left around 12 that night because our, our son had an emergency. Oh. Did that happen, Mr. Ellis? Yes, it did. Do you have anything you want to say about that? I would say that, that um, I'm sorry that that happened. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be a man about it. I, that did happen. But that was because, again, that I wasn't getting... Getting what you want. Yeah, getting what I wanted. 
You say that Mr. Ellis is terrible with money. Why do you say that? When he did have a job and he got paid, he would just spend mainly all his money on himself and not, like, help with bills or household necessities what? or our children. Is Mr. What? Ellis, like, your, your I response to, to that? Make him buy things. Like, I literally had to make him. Well, I would say that she didn't have to make me do anything because I'm a grown man. Um, I would say that, like, when she gets her money, like, she would do things that she want to do. She would want to, she would buy like weed, wigs, uh, like yeah, pay the rent, because, pay the like, when I get when I get my check, I would when I get my check, I would you know like help out in the house too because it was sometimes when she wasn't working and I was and I was mm -hmm. helping out in the house. But when I get my money and I do whatever I want to do with it, like it's a problem. But when she do it, it's okay with it. Well, who's the primary breadwinner? Who is like when the rent is due? Who pulls well, she out there? Who she was she, okay about the utilities and all that? Who was doing all that? Her. The food. Who's doing that? Well, like. Both of us uh, at that time, like, cause it was it was a time where I where she wasn't working and I was, so, like, mm -hmm. but majority of the time she was. And when you got a check though, did you bring it all home and say, "Here, baby, I'm easing the pressure"? No. What would you do? I would go like buy chains and hats and stuff like that, like earrings. But I would still like help out in the house though, like like. The you can't extra just money. say, "Baby, I got the rent this month." No, you gonna buy a chains and hat and give her twenty dollars and say, "Here you go." No. Nah. You're looking kind of weak over there, Mr. Ellis. You, you see that? You, you see the strain coming, don't you? I understand he quit his job two weeks after your son was born. Yes. What reason did he give you? Because it was too far from where we were living at the time. Mr. Ellis, is that accurate? No, it's not. Like the reason why I had lost that job, I, would, I didn't get fired from the job. I had got, um, I was on parole at the time. Uh huh. And I caught a violation. That's why, that's why I couldn't work, because I had caught a violation. You're the subject of that sentence, not the object. But anyway, I'm going to go on from here and ask you what your extended family situation looks like, because we already know what the nuclear family looks like, and it's not looking good. Mr. Ellis would have his family over, and my things and my children's things would end up missing. And I would tell him about that, and he would continue to let them do that. Have you known your family to pilfer from your house? To, no, to not, not my house, but like in general, yeah. In general, they just... Yeah. <laughs>Mrs. Kendricks, you say you have a problem with his extended family. Why don't you tell me why you have a problem with his family? Well, for one, like when I would go to work, um, Mr. Ellis would have his family over and my things and my children's things would end up missing. And I even seen like his family on Facebook with some of my property. And I would tell him about that and he would continue to let them do that. Well, not that you're accountable for what your family does. He but was does, there. Does that story sound at all true? The only part of that was true was when um, one of my family members had my daughter's jacket. And I asked for it back, but they gave it back with no problem. But have you known your family to pilfer from your house? To, no, to not, not my house, but, like, in general, yeah. In general, they just, yeah. <laughs> your family yeah, is involved in theft. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you, you two ever argue about how much access they had to the house? Yes, we have. And what was her concern? She didn't want him in the house. Because? Because of stuff that was going missing that I wasn't aware of, but she was, because mm -hmm. I don't keep up with, with her things. Yeah, but did she tell you about him? Yeah, she did. And and And, and, I, and, I, would, I, and was... I, would, I would tend to, like, brush it off to, like, I see it with my own eyes, like, because one time, when she, like, the jacket situation, she had went on... Um, on um, my family member's page and right. seeing the jacket. Jackets. And she brought it to my attention and then, like, that's when I was like, oh. So you just, just wouldn't believe her? You no, know? I, I, I wouldn't believe it. You know your family has a tendency to pilfer. Not and my whole family, just, like, individuals, certain individuals. But you have to see it with your own eyes. You just wouldn't believe yeah. the woman that you're living with. Yeah, because that individual wouldn't do it to me, so I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't believe it. And so that, that day she, saw, she showed me the picture. You say his family says that you're a fake and you're only about money. Explain that to me. Well, we, like I said, we didn't get along, so, like, I didn't believe in some of the things they did, so I wouldn't talk to them. I wouldn't like to go mm -hmm. around them. So for that, they would call me fake or whatever. Did you ever try to help the relationship between your wife and your family get a little better? Yeah. What'd you like, do? When, like, 
times where we where we be in the um like living room talking and stuff like that, I would like tell her to come outside, well come in the living room and like sit and mingle with us, and she would just be like in a distance like by herself, antisocial. Well, that doesn't help. <laughs> why don't you tell me, Mr. Ellis? I've been I've been banging on you for a minute. Why don't you tell me why this marriage is ending? What what has she done that you say causes this union to be untenable? When she get angry a lot, uh huh. she tends to talk down on me. When you say talk down, give me an example. Like, she would say, you a little, you a little boy, you don't take care of your family. Um, just, like, stuff like that, like negative stuff. Did you say those kind of things to him? I did. Does it help? It didn't. And that's one of the reasons why I, w I was pushed to cheat, too. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mr. Ellis, I hear you. I hear you. We're going to get off that topic now and, and get off onto a topic that I think is extraordinarily important, is your parenting. I understand your, fam your family feels a certain type of way about the way she parents and that you two don't see eye to eye on how you're going to parent the kids, and I want to talk about that next. Why did you kick him out of the house? Because he was cheating. I called his job, and I found out that he was with another woman. Mr. Ellis, is that accurate? Do you think high school sweethearts usually make good spouses to each other? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Today's question sponsored by Divorce Court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and for exclusive content, go to Apple TV. Your family doesn't like the way she parents. Why? Do you know why? I wouldn't say that my family doesn't like the way she parents. It's, it's like we, we, we grew up around like two different environments. I grew up around, like, at a certain age, you, you tend to take care of yourself. Mm hmm And she, I think she grew up around, like, you have to, like, build up a child or whatever the case may be. Right, right, right. Like, like that's... How about child care? There was an issue about the age of the children that cared for your children? Yes, like, sometimes Darquan will let some of his family, a family member who's underage, um, keep our kids while How he's How old? What age range? I mean, were they Probably 16 like or 12, 17? 13 or something like that. They, they, was, they was way older than that. Way older than that? Yes. Okay. Why did you kick him out of the house? Um, because he was cheating. The, the time I called his job and I found out that he was not at work, he told me that, he later on told me that he was with another woman. Mr. Ellis, is that accurate? Yes. What did you see in the, the text the next day? Like, I forgave Mr. Ellis after that. We made up, we said we were gonna make our family, our marriage work. And the next morning, I got a text from Darquan saying that he was in love with the other person and that he didn't want to be with me. I didn't text her that personally. It was... It uh, still got sent to me, and with his permission. He told so me that... So you, you, you cheated on your wife, she caught you. You make up with her, and then immediately text the woman you cheated on her with that you loved her and not your wife. Is that accurate? And he was at her house that morning. Is that accurate? See, most part, yes. yes. But I didn't text the other female and tell her that I loved her and then was with her. I didn't, I didn't do that. You with her first and then texted the other woman that you were in love with her? <laughs> yeah, yes. I stabbed her first before I shot her. I didn't shoot her before <laughs> I stabbed her. Get it right. <laughs> you, you understand what I meant with that metaphor, right? Yeah. Why did you leave the state with the kids? Um, I was tired of the back and forth. I felt like we were on the same page and we were going to try to work our marriage out. And I wasn't going to, you know, stick around for Darquan to decide if you want to be with me one day and want to be with the other person the next day. Mm -hmm. Why, if you, if you felt that she drove you to cheat for all the variety of reasons that you've given, why didn't you, instead of doing all that, just leave her? Leave because you were in love with somebody else. Yeah, you were, you were leading her to believe that you were going to work out her marriage. And, um, I would say at the still... time I was confused because, like, like me and her was, was arguing a lot. And the, the, other, the other female that I was dealing with at the time, like, 
she was showing me more of uh, like more uh, affection. And the other stuff woman like that. always shows more affection. Good God, don't you read? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you remember, yeah, baby. You know, when you're trying to get somebody, you're always nicer. It's always easier. You don't have any kids with her. She's excited to see you. You haven't hurt her before. So, yeah, she's delightful. The other woman's always delightful. Good God. <laughs> Where are you living now? Um, I, I stay in um, Albany, New York. Do you have your own home? No, I don't. I stay with a, a roommate. A woman? No. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't believe you. I'm going to uh, talk about that three hundred fifty-seven dollars, and I'm going to say what I have to say to everybody, and then I'm going to go. Today's question sponsored by: What would you do if your spouse blamed you for pushing them to cheat? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. So at the beginning, and you said, uh, at this case, out of all the stuff you want, you want $357 from him because he bought a game system while you were in a shelter. Please explain that to me. Well, I feel like the situation was wrong. Um, Darquan knew that we were in a, a messed up situation, and he took advantage of the fact that I left my debit card at home trying to save money so that we can get a place and purchase the game without me knowing. Were you married at the time? Yes. Was that your card alone yes. attached to your bank? Yes. I see you don't have any documents with you. No, I ended up closing that account. Let's see if we can get a stipulation from Mr. Ellis over here. Reach down deep in your heart. Did you use um, her debit card without her permission to buy a game system while your yes. children were? <laughs> stipulation! <laughs> Hallelujah! Now, let me say this. That's the only decent thing you've ever done. Uh, you're tacky and you're no count. You do the wrong things and then you blame it on the woman you do it to so you can feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you've told her she's the reason that you cheat on her, which probably made her feel horrible about herself. She tried to figure it out, wondered what was going on and how she could make it better. And even though you did it to her over and over and over again, she tried mightily to save that marriage and you kept messing with her. And right to the very end, you made up with her after you cheated on her and texted the other chick the next day. I mean, you had absolutely no intention of being a right guy. You had absolutely no intention of being a good dude. And I don't, I, I, I mean, whoo, how do you live with yourself? I don't know. Do you have daughters or sons? Both. Do you know what your daughters are gonna bring home? They're gonna bring home a carbon copy of you. Because that's what they think a dude does. That's... The, and it's going to break your heart. Teach her that there are better men out there. You know, be strong and capable and centered. Don't go from dude to dude. If they ain't good, leave them alone. There's a saying, I can do bad all by myself, but I don't believe that. I think you could, some people just do better by themselves. I do. You know what I mean? Better to do, you have nothing at all than having, having that piece of negativity in your life. You don't want that. You should be embarrassed. Every time you look at your daughter, you ought to think about what you do. But the joy that I get today is, I'm gonna give $357 to Ms. Kendricks for that debit card. It is so ordered. What could you have done differently, thinking back? Um, I could have just asked my wife, like, for, for the money that I spent instead of me taking it. So what has this whole experience taught you about yourself? That I can do better by myself. Mm -hmm. The next time I call myself getting involved with someone, I'll just take the time to actually get to know them better. Today on Divorce Court. I am here at Divorce Court today because I'm tired of the father of my children lying to me, 
cheating on me and not giving me the time that he's supposed to give me and my children. Anna feels that I have a, a gambling problem. Anna drinks every day. Every time I would come home from work, she would have a glass of wine in her hand. When Joseph cheats on me, it really breaks my heart because it makes me feel like I'm not woman enough for him. Anna doesn't trust me and she thinks I'm not a good father and she thinks I need to grow up. I want the judge to tell Joseph that he needs to straighten up his act and he needs to mature as well. I want the judge to tell Anna that I'm a good man and I'm trying to better my relationship because I'm not perfect. I want to marry Joseph, but he has to stop lying. He needs to be honest, not only honest to me, but honest to himself as well. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Anna Rodriguez and Joseph Sanchez. Ms. Rodriguez, you're 23. Mr. Sanchez, you are 20. You have two children together. Yes. One 18 months old and one eight months old. Yes. So you're busy. Very. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez, why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you've come to see me today? I'm here today because Joseph's like a rolling stone. He's out day and night with other girls and I'm tired of it. I had actually met Joseph through Instagram. I was mm -hmm. in a club promotion event and I invited him out. He couldn't come, he was underage. Five months after I had reached out to him again, we went out and three weeks into that, I had moved in with him into his relative's house. A couple months after that, I was pregnant with our first baby. I came to him about it. He wasn't ready to have a baby. You know, he was too young. He just didn't want anything. It hurt me because I loved him already. So I decided to cut all ties with him. I didn't want to call him. I didn't want nothing to do with him. He eventually came back around and told me, I want to be, you know, the man in your life for our kids. Let's go ahead and do this. I forgave everything that happened before and I said, let's go. It didn't seem to stop from there. Joseph began cheating again. He was going out, seeing other girls while I was pregnant. One night, I was laying down and I get a casual text message from an unknown number and it said, your man is out here with my friend cheating on you while you're at home pregnant. I called him and I, no answer, no text message. This is pregnant with the first one. Yes, yes ma'am. So the next day he comes home and I confront him about it. What, what does this mean? What's going on? His response to the text message to what I had to say was, it's probably my ex-girlfriend. She's just trying to ruin our relationship. I believed it at the time and I let it go. I said, okay, it's fine. Let's go ahead and keep it pushing. So then after that incident, there was an other incident where I was left home alone. I was pregnant, you know, with my first one still. And he was not answering my phone call. He was not answering my text messages. It made me extremely furious. I called him again. He was just not answering. And after that incident... Well, let, 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 that was plenty. <laughs> uh, Mr. Sanchez, why don't you tell me, is she accurate so far, or is she missing things, or how do, you, how do you see the beginning of your relationship okay. as going? Anna has trust issues, okay? In the beginning of the relationship, everything went well, everything was fun, everything was fine. Later into it, when we started to get serious, I realized that she has issues. Her issues are, you know... When she... you say started to get serious, how deep, how long had you known her? I'd known her for probably about a month until she got pregnant. So the issues were, like, not clear at the moment because we didn't know each other clear enough for me to realize that. Before our relationship, she had a bad relationship and that caused problems between us and, you know, my family when we had our kids. She went through my phone one night when I was asleep. I, I was getting notifications, my phone's getting blown up. I have social media, you know, it's pretty popping. <laughs> but uh, I have an open phone policy, she knows my code, everything. She went through to my phone, she texted the girl, it went too deep, and she took it a little bit too far. So it bothered me, you know, but I, could, I thought I could let you go through my phone, I thought I could let you have my password, and it caused problems. Does he, does he have an open phone policy? Now he does. But it shouldn't get to the point where you need to let me look at your phone and let me find stuff and you be okay with it. Okay. I'm about to lose my mind. <laughs> the thing is with me... No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Oh, no. I'm about to lose my mind. Do you know why? I'm about to lose my mind 
because you two think that the issue is his cheating and 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 going through phones. That's not the issue. The thing I'm about to lose my mind about is the fact that you knew a dude for three weeks and then you moved in with him. You knew a chick for three weeks and you moved in, not to your house, not that you were a grown man out on your own, but you moved her into a relative's house. Oh my God, why would you do that? And then you said, I don't think I knew her that well. No, you don't know anybody in three weeks. You have absolutely no clue who they are. You didn't put any thought into it. You were like, oh, I really like her. Let's move in. Let's get pregnant. You got to think about what you're doing before you do it. Now I'm done. What do you got to say? <laughs> okay. You're right. You know, we were young. I'm younger than her. But at the time, we both needed each other. I did let her move in with me with one of my relatives, you know, and everything was good. Everything went well. We were getting our money together, you know. She had a job, I was looking for one. But the thing is, though, is with me, I don't have trust issues. <laughs> because the simple fact is, is that if I choose you, I'm not gonna, you know, go behind your back and, oh, well, she's cheating on me. I'm not insecure and I'm not sensitive. Well, were so, you doing any of the things that she said you were doing with the other girls and all that kind of stuff? That causes trust issues. Yes, so the reason... That, no, let me ask. I'm asking you. Did you do those things she said you did? You know what? A few times I did, and I did leave her when she was pregnant, but I just didn't know how much I had come in my way. You know, it was my first baby, my first baby boy, and, you know, I was 17. So... My Mind you this, I had my first son. I went through postpartum depression. The pain was very unbearable. I was home alone. I didn't have the support system I needed to have from him or just family in general. So I had actually torn and they had to sew me up. So every step I took, I literally cried. And I had nobody there, you know, give me the baby. I got you, don't worry. I had to tough it out. I had to tough it out for my son. That was the only way I had to do it. That was not the end of it. I got pregnant with my second baby six months after having my son. Wait, 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 wait. Eh, 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 eh. Okay. We're gonna take a break. Yes. So I don't pass out, <laughs> and then we'll talk about the second baby. I see him hop in another car as he was going to the store. I got furious. I was like, okay, let's go. I tracked him through the phone. I got a brick, I got a bat. The phone took me to the location where he was at. I was standing face to face in front of him and the girl. There's so much here, but I want to stop after that first baby with the extraordinary failure on your part. You get that part, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. He was a boy. Yes. So that's why yeah. he did that. Yes. You, you know what I'm it's saying? It's understandable. And I understand how tremendously heartbreaking and difficult that was for you. Having said that, why the next one if he behaved so badly with the first one? I thought he would change, but I was pregnant with my second daughter, and I thought everything's fine. One day, he told me, you know, I'm going to go to the store. I believed him, you're going to go to the store. I called him because I actually needed something from the store. No answer, no text, no nothing. So That's I was able to hack into his. Stop. I was able to hack into his account and get his messages. Turns out he was actually going to go see another girl with my car. <laughs> so what I did was I called up his relative and I said, "I need I need you to do a pop up for me." She said, "Okay, let's go." She goes to the location where the girl. You know at. what a pop up is. So she goes to the location where the girl's at, and she confronts the girl for me, and she puts her on the line for me, and I tell her, look, this is who I am, and that's my man, so leave him alone. I didn't know who you were. She said, well, I don't care, because I need to get my stuff done. I said, well, I do care. He shows up and tells his relative, let's go. You know, he played out like he didn't know the chick. Fine, cool. 15 minutes after that, he calls me. What are you doing? Where are you at? I said, what do you mean, what am I doing? Where am I at? I just caught you. That's what I'm doing. I hang up, I didn't want to talk to him all day, I didn't want to do nothing all day. He comes home at four in the morning, my car is wrecked. Oh, oh my yes. Ms. Mr. Sanchez, what would you like to yes, say about those I circumstances? I do have some things to say about that. Okay. I sure do. That did happen, she did go through my things, and you know, it is what it is. But I did not end up hanging with no females. I went to my relative's house, I was there all day. And, you know, the thing was is that I just stayed out all day with my relatives. We were having fun, and then it ended up rain, raining that night. 
and I lost control of the vehicle and I hit the curb. And left my car on the side of the road and I wasn't there anymore the next day. I'm That's not cry. the only incident. It, it's not done. It, <laughs> what it, else? It's, it's, it's not over. So actually just recently, two uh -huh. months ago, he tells me, I'm gonna go to the store and I see a car pull up in our neighborhood. I see him hop in another car as he was going to the store. I got furious. I was like, okay, let's go. What's up? I called him. No answer. He called me back and, where are you at? What are you doing? And I hung up. I tracked him through the phone because you could track people through your phone now. <laughs> so I called my friend up and I said, can you come watch the babies really quick? I need to go handle something. I got a brick. I got a bat. The phone took me to the location where he was at. I was standing face to face in front of him and the girl in the car. They thought I was going to do something with the bat and the brick, so they sped off right in front of me. I said, I'm not done here. I called a taxi. I went to the other location he was at where he just stopped. He's sitting right in front of a car like, what's going on? I'm like, what do you mean what's going on? I just saw you with my own eyes. That's what's going on. You want to know his answer? That was in me. Oh. <laughs> really? Your Honor. Your Honor. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. No. It wasn't you at all. Mm -mm. This is what happened. I went to the store. I ended up meeting up with one of my friends. We went out to the restaurant, you know, we got something to eat. You know, I didn't check my phone. I ended up going back to the house, and she did pop up outside. But I thought it was somebody totally different. I did not know who it was. She walked up to the car with a brick and a bat. Yeah, I got that okay, part. Okay, and my friend pulled off. Now, I don't know who she's seeing. She must be seeing stuff, because that wasn't no female. <laughs> wasn't Long a young hair, lady. Hey, 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 hey! She might have seen me. I don't want but... you people to believe that I think that what you said, anything you're talking about is reasonable. I, I just want to let you know I think it's all unreasonable. Mm -hmm. But I want to stop right here and turn the table off this, because all of these stories are going to be the same. <laughs> I want to talk about money and gambling, and then buckle up. I had gone to work, and I had to hide my money in a shoebox. He managed to find the shoebox, so by the time I came back, there's $80 missing. Mr. Sanchez, where'd the $80 go? Do you think relationships should have an open phone policy? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Today's question sponsored by... Divorce Court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and for exclusive content, go to Apple TV. Ms. Rodriguez, you claim Mr. Sanchez is fiscally irresponsible and you told me a, a story about parking in the handicap spot. Why don't you tell me about that? So Joseph is really responsible about managing his money, and he seems to always spend it on unnecessary things. One day, Joseph had actually picked me up from my job, and he parked in the handicap area without a handicap sticker or a sign. So we come back out from my job, and the car is nowhere to be found. The car was towed. I had to call my friend to come pick us up. She picked us up, she took us home. The next morning, I call. It's $500 to get your car out. That came out of my pocket. I was pregnant when this had happened. So, that's really... Do you do stuff not to get pregnant? <laughs> do, do, do you consider that at all? You know what? To be honest, no. Holy was... cow! <laughs> Why not? What can I say? <laughs> Something intelligent! <laughs> okay. <laughs> One thing... Could I speak uh, uh, <laughs> Tell me about the gambling. So then, after that happened, I, he lost his job at the time. I started working. I had gone to work, and I had to hide my money in a shoebox. So while I was out at work, he managed to find the shoebox. So by the time I came back, I'm going through my shoebox, counting the money, and there's $80 missing. So I, my first instinct, ask him. I asked him, where's my $80? I'm gonna pay you right back, don't worry. Did I ever see my $80? I never saw him till this day. Ms. Ms. Mr. Sanchez, where'd the $80 go? Honestly, I don't remember right now. <laughs> but do you gamble? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you find that inconsistent with your economic circumstances currently? Currently, no, because I have a good job. 
But in the beginning, yes, because I wasn't working and I know I had lost my job and I was taken from her. How much is the most that you've lost? In one night? Yeah. Mm. I'd probably say like about $400. <laughs> So you see where my issue comes in with the money, to where yeah. it's affecting us. I understand you have an issue with her drinking. Right. Tell me about that. Whenever she drinks, she takes it a little bit too far, and she says things that she doesn't mean. Give me an example. An example is, is when we get into arguments, she's very foul, foul language, you know, like she brings up things that are not supposed to be said. Things that are not supposed to be said. Of course. Like what? Oh, uh, she speaks upon, you know, past issues or whatever. Things that have already happened and yes. you don't think she should talk about them anymore. Exactly, yes, because I better myself, you know, into a better man, more responsible for my kids and for her. But when she gets mad, like I said, she and takes it to oh, a whole wrong. another level. Yeah. I got it, I got it, I got it, okay. Okay. You, no, no, oh, oh, no, no, no. Like I said, buckle up. Today's question sponsored by... What should couples do before starting a family together? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I understand that you are legitimately angry at him for, for, for behaving in a childish, immature, irresponsible, ridiculous manner pretty much throughout the course of your entire relationship. Yes. I get that. But he's a kid. You know what I mean? I got a, my, my youngest child is 23. I know what 20 looks like. 20 is ridiculous, especially on a dude. They do what they want, when they want, how they want to do it, and they don't think, they don't have a whole lot of forward thinking and all that kind of stuff. That doesn't, that, that, that doesn't absolve you of responsibility. You can't pull some woman into your house, knock her up twice, go gambling, and think it's okay. You have brought two lives into this world, two, and you are drinking, you're running up on your man with, with, with bricks and bats. He's, he's, a, he's a philandering, cheating, irresponsible dude. That's who you picked. That's who you picked. And you can't brick him out of it, you can't bat him out of it, because that's what he is, an immature little boy. And you are an immature little girl. You're behaving like you're in high school. You're all, I got my girl doing a pop-up and we gonna buy on the phone and all that kind of stuff. You can't do that as a mother. You have to be a grown person. You have to be intelligent. You have to use birth control. Yes. You didn't even try. Your children are not going to have a snowball's chance in hell in growing up as rational individuals because your, her parents are incompetent. You're not worried about the right things. You're not interested in the right things. You spend money turning up or turn to whatever. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yes, sir. In my day, we called it acting a fool. And that's what you spend your time on? You're worried about, is he with this girl or with that? Yeah, he's out there doing that. Because he's a child. Stop having children until you've stopped having fun. Stop having, stop making a relationship when you're still in high school. And emotionally, you're both still in high school. Birth control. That's all I can say. Birth control. Yes. One more time. Birth, Birth control. control. Everybody say it with me. Control. This matter's adjourned. <laughs> uh, what do you think is going to happen after you leave here this afternoon? I don't think things are going to change. I hope so. Like she said, he's too young. So I get that, but I just think he should be more responsible. As a father, I'm going to take more responsibility to my family, to my girl, and step up to the plate.